Окей. Давай, 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 поговорим. As I would say in Russian. This is a video that a lot of people wanted me to do, so I guess here it is, right? Three different lenses, essentially all the same focal. We have the 80 to 200. Now there's a cheaper version of this, the push-pull lens, which is perfectly valid. It's a push-pull 80 to 200 millimeter f2.8 fixed aperture. 350 bucks average. It is a bit of an old critter. It's worth every bit of 350 bucks. This is the later. Now Nikon still makes this lens uh, for a reason. Now you should probably ask yourself, why does Nikon still make it? Now new price on it is uh, 1200 bucks. 1200 bucks. It's made like a breakout house. It's tougher than woodpecker lips. Um, it does one have, I'll mention it here in a second. Uh, 1200 bucks. You usually find it for like $600 used. The Nikon has been making this lens for a long time. This lens has a couple serious deficits depending on how you approach its use. You know, you can't uh, drive a Volkswagen like a sports car and uh, you uh, like a lot of high revving engines that are no good for city. Uh, I know some really rich people that have some of these insanely expensive uh, sports cars and they just want to run. And it's like, well, you think that'd be great, right? And it's like, well, yeah, if you're on the freeway, you're just like, nee, nee. if you're in the city with them, however, <laughs> you know, they don't like going from stop sign to stop light to stop sign. You know, they just, they're, they're painful. It's like, wow, this super high performance car is a crotch pain in the city. Go figure that one. A serious issue on this one is, and Nikon even warns about it. It's like, well, you know, it'll focus down to about uh, 15 feet or so. Um... You know, but my pictures end up blurred. Well, Nikon warns you, you don't use this lens that close. So you're talking about 25 uh, feet uh, or further is really the main intent of this lens. Um, this is a perfect compromise. It's 16 elements. It actually has better saturation, better bandwidth than these other two lenses that are a lot more expensive over here, especially this lens. This, le this lens is, oh my God, a lot more expensive. Uh, Two thousand eight hundred dollars, the new uh, E version of uh, the Nikkor. I should call it the VR3. Nikon should have just called it the VR3. God damn it! No one wants to call it the seventy two hundred two point eight E series. Like people are like, what the hell is an E? So let's just call it the VR3. Damn it! Make oh that clears it up. It's the latest seventy to two hundred two point eight Nikkor. Um, this lens has better saturation. It's the perfect medium between prime and zoom. As so far as uh, the best micro contrast, the best saturation straight out of the camera, obviously you can drive, uh, 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 move some of the saturation sliders, uh, some uh, clarity sliders, and some sharpening in a Lightroom or whatever application you use, and make any of these lenses the same. A lot of people care too much about straight out of camera. I do care a lot about straight out of camera. Uh, this lens does have better micro contrast, does have better saturation. You have an issue using it close up. However, this lens is only 600 bucks. It's all metal. It's made in Japan. It's made like a breakout house. Now, I've got uh, two copies of this lens. I bought this lens used many years ago. Oftentimes, this little button, people uh, will actually break uh, this. Uh, they're so stupid. It's like you got to press in this button and then turn it between manual and automatic. That's a little design flaw on this, uh, but if you actually have, have more than two brain cells and uh, know how to use it, that's not a problem. Is it really a design flaw? No, but a lot of people love to abuse this. And oftentimes when you find these lenses used, it'll say the MA switch is broken. Like this one's basically broken unless you actually let gravity take a hold. There you go. Now it locked in. I had to shake the lens to let this little silver button lock in. So you're actually supposed to press this button before you switch it back and forth. Everybody loves to break that part of this. They do. They just love to break it. Um, this one is slightly broken, but I'm not the one that broke it. I got it really cheap. So this is a perfect compromise. It's uh, 600 bucks, $1,200 new. However, I would never buy this one new because there's a crap load of these out there. This lens, Nikon still makes this lens for a reason. It's like, well, why would Nikon make this slow old beast that you can't use very close as opposed to this new creature that they just came out with? Well, I'll explain that. As I just basically did, saturation and, uh, you know, it's a perfect compromise between zoom and prime. You really can't judge any zoom against any prime. That's one of the rules of actually judging lenses. And people say, well, you know, how does it compare to a, uh, to a prime lens of the same focal? It's like, well, I can't. You know, a zoom lens must be judged against other zoom lenses. And that's certainly what I'm doing here. I'm judging them against other zoom lenses. Here's the next medium of compromise. One lens that I've recommended. By the way... I've said endlessly, uh, and I've gotten a lot of shit for it. I've never recommended the VR1 or the VR2 Nikkor 70-200. They're just 
don't like them. It's not saying that they're horrific lenses at all. I just never recommended them. I said, why can't you recommend any of the Nikkor 70 to 200? So I said, I just can't. This one I can. Um, so I, I just kept getting that flack. I said, eventually Nikon's going to come out with a really awesome 70 to 200, which here it is right now. As I just came out with it. This was the lens I've been recommending forever, and I still do recommend it. I mean, this lens is $1,300. Well, actually, no, right now it's $1,200 new. Same price as this one new. This is a lot faster. Now, this one is made in Japan. It's the Tamron 70 to 2.8 VC. Okay, stands for vibration control. This one's made in Japan. However, all the current versions of this are made in China. I believe all the current versions. They just outsourced it now. I got one of the earlier ones. They're all outsourced to China now. I hear that there's no difference in quality of manufacture. However, there could be a minor difference. But uh, anyway, um, mid-range, uh, mid-purpose, uh, quite a lot of elements. This one, by the way, 16 elements, 23 elements, and 22 elements. Mid-range, all-purpose, uh, zoom lens. You can focus in really close with it. The resolution is not absolutely stellar. It is plenty good enough, however. Uh, the resolution is lacking. The autofocus tracking uh, for sports action and fast-moving wildlife like birds in flight, it is lacking. That much? Not really. Not really, no. I mean, a lot of people have used this for birds in flight. However, most people that own this lens is like, you know, it's just a little lagging for, you know, autofocus tracking. Not much. Um, plenty of people... Uh, uh, use this uh, for wedding photography. Uh, the output's fine. Micro contrast is, I wouldn't say bad, but it, let's just say it's not good. It is, uh, it is decent. Um, saturation, not so hot. You need to drag some of those uh, sliders over to the right. I mean, 23 elements takes its effect. Um, the bokeh is lacking. So if you're going to use this for wedding portraiture, it is not what I would call creamy, dreamy, and uh, pleasing. It's kind of like, uh, I wouldn't say it's like looking at the ugly stepchild of someone's brother, but it's definitely not that, but it's, uh, it's less than very satisfying. <laughs> it's not bad, however. It's just less than satisfying. Slightly less than satisfying. Um, plenty fast, plenty great. Well, we're talking about $1,300 new or about 980 or 1000 bucks used. I see a lot of these for like 10, 1050 used on eBay. This is a great damn lens. This lens is worth every bit of a thousand bucks. As soon as I got this new lens, people say, Are you gonna get rid of the Tamron? I'm like, hell no, I'm not. This one's not only made in Japan. I don't think the Chinese ones are any different, but uh, you know, it's a great lens. You know, it's kind of like when you got a hot chick in the room and then like a super hot chick comes into the room. It's like, oh, damn, you got to dump that hot chick. It's like, why would I dump? You know, she's as hot as she ever was before. It's like, yeah, but this girl that entered the room, she is so much hotter than the chick that was there before. You know, that sort of thinking, you know, it's the same sort of premise of why would I get rid of this Tamron lens? Why? You know, I, I would still find need to use this. Um, as much... Obviously not, no, no. <laughs> a lot less. You could have got a lot less to love in, shall we say. Now here we go with some super expensive. Oh, okay. I have insurance on this lens. I actually have insurance on the Tamron, too. At $2,800, you damn well bet I have insurance. By the way, both of these lenses here are pretty damn heavy. Okay, you don't want them hanging off your camera. If you got a, a Black Rapid or whatever uh, strap you system that you use, and you got two cameras and a wedding... I would not want to be walking around with either one of these lenses flopping off my lens mount. Would not. Would not. Damage my lens mount. Actually, what they usually do is warp them or strip the threads. Not good. And you usually don't notice it until it's like, wow, my lens mount looks a little crooked. Uh, it's like it's not only warped, you've uh, stripped the threads a little bit. So that's an issue, you know. Will you have a heavy-ass lens that requires support... That means one of your damn hands is on the camera and your other damn hand is on the lens. That creates a slight issue. It's like you can let go of it, but not for extended period. You certainly can't walk with it because that stress of when you walk as you stride, it actually tugs on that camera mount. Every time you stride, the lens is going, uh, and basically uh, swinging off the balls of your camera mount. <laughs> and eventually that's going to cause a hernia to your camera mount. Uh, that's a pretty good analogy, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> someone's got a comment about that one. Um, the new lens, now I knew this new lens was coming. It's a 110 grams lighter than the VR2. I knew this lens would be sharper and faster autofocus. 
than the VR2. I mean, I knew that. I've been saying that this lens had to be coming because even Nikon knew, you know, Nikon's going, you know, we're getting the shit kicked out of us by Canon and, uh, you know, Tamron. You know, when, like, the uh, the uh, Tamron 7200 is uh, the desirable choice over our own expensive VR2, it's like, we got a problem. We got to redesign this girl. And so, in their lab, they have come up with this beast. And it's not fast. It is absolutely batshit crazy fast. Um, I actually have my autofocus buttons set to uh, the front uh, lens buttons. It's any one of these four. They all operate the same. You actually set that up in your menus under F1, under controls, like on the Nikon D500 or D5, for example. So I actually have one finger here on the zoom. I'm actually using this for autofocus on my lens. The VR2 didn't have this. Now, the Nikkor AD200 AFS had one of these buttons. This is actually kind of costly to actually add to the lens. And I'm actually using the shutter release only to release the shutter. So I'm actually focusing up here. Depends on what you want to do to make a difference. Um, bandwidth. Pretty damn good. 22 elements. Um, lightweight. I don't have to worry about you know taking a walk and doing something else and grabbing something in my pocket or my camera bag with this hanging off my camera. It's lightweight enough that it is not a worry. It's not too far from the borderline, but it is not a worry of this dangling off uh, your camera mount. Um, really shocking was a very good bouquet off of this lens. Oh, yeah. This is, in 3,000 videos, this is the only really expensive lens that I've actually given, you know, an extremely high rating to. You know, sometimes, and necessitatively so, it must be the case that the best lens for the job is also one that is just uh, begrudgingly, insanely expensive. My wallet is still squealing uh, from the purchase of this lens. It is all made in Japan. All of these lenses are actually made in Japan, except for the new Tamron 7200. Mine is made in Japan, but they don't make them in Japan anymore. Um, what were some other points I was going to actually point out to the contrast between the three? Um, let me actually go back to the page here. Uh, the king of bokeh between these three. Uh, it's definitely the autofocus king. It is absolutely lord, master, and god in resolution. I mean, stick this on an Icon D500. You, you use that on a crop sensor camera? Yeah, who gives a shit? I mean, it's the equivalent of 105 millimeters to 300 millimeters on the Nikon D500, which is perfectly fine for wedding, not just wildlife and sports. I mean, what the hell is wrong to a field of view equivalent of 105 to 300? The answer to that is nothing. It is so incredibly sharp. The resolution is just absolute, just half flat out insane crazy just crazy ass insane and crop the shit out of it and with the pixel density on the Nikon D500 if it were scaled up at the same pixel pitch would be 47 megapixel sensor 20.8 on the Nikon D500 times 2.25 is what 47 point something megapixels so this lens with its absolutely batshit crazy insane resolution on the Nikon D500 makes it a winner Totally lightweight. You can let it dangle off your camera mount. The bokeh on it is incredible. So this lens is not only absolutely batshit crazy wonderful to use for portraiture, for wedding, and oh my god, shit, it focuses so close. And basically no focus breathing. All of the things, it's kind of like, well, once every 2,000 years where all the stars align perfectly and you end up with this, uh, you know, once in a millennial event of uh, of uh, of uh, astrological, no, I'm not into astrology, of alignment. That is what this lens, the incredible close focusing, basically no focus breathing, the batshit crazy resolution, which is absolutely unbelievable. At the top of my head, I actually cannot think of any lens that I have other than, uh, you know, tripod mount, Tekina 100mm, for except, you know, the fact that this is on a zoom lens at the entire range, and the lens rentals and their scientific testing of 10 of these lenses prove that fact. This lens is absolutely just freaking fucking incredible. Um, it's not that far from the 7200 2.8 uh, VR at uh, 200 millimeters. It's substantially better at 70, but between like about 110 millimeters to about 180 millimeters, which is like 60% of the uh, focal length of this lens, it is the exact words of lens rental on their website is mops the floor with the uh, VR2. In other words, much, much of this range mops the floor with the VR2. Um, so king of bokeh, king of autofocus, 
close focusing, uh, the portraiture, the use of this for portraiture, sports action. You know, there are basically almost no lenses that you could say, this lens is the absolute shit for, uh, you know, bird shooting, sports action, wildlife, and it also has really good bokeh for wedding and portraiture. Those combinations that just basically almost don't exist. I mean, I can count on less than one hand. I can actually count on three fingers the number of lenses that actually have those properties that I could say, you know, it's like, I want to go out and shoot some bird sports action wildlife. Okay, here's a lens. I want to go, uh, I need to pack for a wedding. I want to shoot some portraiture, a lens that is insanely fast. Uh, the VR, shit the VR. Oh, God, Lord's better than the uh, the vibration reduction on the uh, Tamron 70 to 200. Oh, yes, baby. Yes, baby. Yes. That's what I forgot to mention, the VR. Also, a perfect lens uh, for portraiture with great bokeh for portraiture or wedding. It's like, okay, here's the same damn lens. It's like, really? That sort of cross... I love Swiss Army knife lenses, like the 60mm 2.8D. It's like, that, great, that lens is great for macro portraiture. It's great on FX. It's great on DX. That lens is a do-it-all. You could use it for reproduction work, macro work, portraiture work. It's great on FX and DX. That lens is the shit. That lens stands alone. Nothing else comes close to it. This is another lens like that. I can't say that about either one of these two lenses. I'm comparing these three lenses, so I have to talk about these three lenses. Well, I've already compared it against the VR1 and the VR2, which, by the way, I never ever recommended. This lens has it all, just like the 60mm 2.8D. Unfortunately, the really nasty, unfortunate thing about this, and I don't regret getting it, is that it is bad shit. It's just insanely great expensive. My wallet is still screaming. You said that before. Yeah, well, I have to say it again. My wallet's still screaming. I could hear it in the middle of the night, whimpering, like that anorexic girl on YouTube. <laughs> That's not very funny. I'm talking about some really, 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 really... Yeah, I needed to catch the, I needed to catch the disease she's got, right? Said the fat guy. Um, yeah, my wallet's still screaming. Um, all of those properties make this an absolutely magical lens. See, I was only expecting the resolution and was only expecting the autofocus speed. However, the resolution was far, far more than I expected, and the autofocus tracking was eh, significantly more than I, I mean, it would be much faster. Um, it, it turned out to be faster than I expected. However, the fact that, you know, Especially if you're going to go on a trip. It's like, I want to go on a trip, and I want, I want two or three lenses that do it all. If I were to go on a trip, it's like, I want to do some portraiture, uh, you know, shoot some uh, family members over in Deutschland or wherever the hell it is you're going. Some people, I need incredible VR. I mean, nothing is worse than bitching around with a, a monopod or a tripod. Everybody says, what sort of tripod should I take on vacation? I said, screw that crap, you know. This is the reason why... You know, you have a lens like this, so you don't actually have to travel with a damn monopod. Or I mean, I handhold this at the 15th of a second at 200 millimeter. 15th of a second! You know, the vibration reduction on it is absolutely incredible. Lightweight, amazing bokeh, perfect for sports, action, wildlife. This, what, lenses like that don't exist. You can ask any professional. It's like, name me a lens that is just absolutely amazing for portraiture, uh, for sports, action, wildlife. It's like, well, you know, lenses like that don't exist. You can either have one or a little bit of the other. You could like, okay, for that. But a lens that's incredible for both. That combined with all the other features is what makes this worth every penny of the damn two thousand eight hundred dollars that this damn expensive lens costs. Do not regret this lens. I only thing I regret about this lens is actually testing it. But I knew I had to test it because once I tested it, and it actually blew my privates right off my crotch. <laughs> Because it was so amazing, I thought to myself, actually, I said it out loud with nobody around. I said, shit, i got to buy this damn lens. And, I actually, I was, and then after that, I could hear my wallet whimpering going, oh, no, <laughs> I'm totally serious about that. That's a bit of hyperbole, but it's absolutely 100% completely, uh, uh, completely objective, and I do mean that. I'll never regret buying this lens. However, it gets lost or stolen or dropped or something like that, and it hasn't happened in quite a while to me. I do have it fully insured already. Ha, 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 ha. You get a lens like this, you damn well better insure it. I mean, I could buy a used, a used decent vehicle for what this lens costs. 
So there is no perfect lens. I mean, it's like if you said, well, what's the best lens that I should buy for portraiture? He's like, well, are you going to do anything else other than portraiture? No, but I want to zoom for portraiture. Well, you can't use a close-up, but it would be the 80 to 